I hope my honest portrayal of my life in a little tiny cottage in a forest glade is leaving no one in any doubt that this is not a glamorous lifestyle. But if anyone out there hasn't got that message, I want to demonstrate to you this is what I look like most of the time. I'm covered in sweat because it's so freaking stinking humid. I'm covered in ash because it's impossible not to get it all over your face. If you thought this was running through grass in white linen dresses and taking cookies out of the oven, you're wrong. As I'd quickly share with you my flower arrangement of the week. It may be stinking hot and humid outside, it may be 26, but in my mind, this is now autumn, so I have switched to autumn arrangements. I'm not sure what these plants are, we inherited this one, it's a really nice plant, the bees and the butterflies and the nectar eating birds love it. Um, it's a big plant, don't know what that is, and then the rest of it's this Cataneaster, which is in berry. I loathe Cataneaster, it's my least favourite plant in the whole world. But it looks quite nice in this arrangement and lends it a nice autumnal touch. I'm just going to take a seat on this stump and check out this wallaby. Let's zoom in. I think it's a female. Oh, anyway, welcome to Monday. This is um, the cusp really between summer and autumn. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs> I'll zoom back out. Um, although it probably doesn't look it. And it's a time of year that I call the last because as we're transitioning from the warmer months to the cooler months, I'm reaching that point of my calendar where I'm doing things for the last time until next spring. So, you know, it might be the last time I mow a certain piece of lawn or the last time I stream a piece of garden or the last time I do this, that and the other. Um, and then those tasks get replaced by new tasks. <laughs> it never ends. But anyway, so we're in, we're in the lasts and I've just done some lawn mowing. Ah, uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> I've gone all around the orchard and up behind um, the house and now I'm going to go and do the streaming and I hope that this might be the last time I have to do that this year. <laughs> this be the last time until spring I have to mow these lawns? <laughs> no, probably not, anyway. <laughs> not to worry. Um, I'm just stood over here by my plants so I thought I'd check in and see how my seedlings are coming on. Um, <laughs> and then I stumbled across this. Um, I have no idea if you'll be able to see that. Um, but right in the middle of the shot there. It's a tiny caterpillar 
on my Tokyo Bacana plant, one of many that I've just discovered. <laughs> um, you know, filming butterflies in slow motion is all very beautiful, but, <laughs> and I do genuinely like butterflies, but as a grower of particularly brassica type plants, this is the main downside of those lovely white butterflies. <laughs> They hone in on anything and they lay these little tiny eggs. And before you know it, yeah, you've lost your crop. Anyway, <laughs> so this is my carrots. Looking lovely. Kale's coming on. That's that Amish deer tongue. Silver beets coming along. Oh, down at the bottom, there's my beetroot. little sage. Now I thought when I planted these out this parsley had probably gone past it and I think I've been proven right which is fair enough I just get some new but this parsley is a different type that's doing all right. That's the Tokyo Bacana much beloved of these tiny caterpillars and chili plants have got some flowers coming on. The uh, Mizuna is looking good. Basil's looking alright. Basil seems to have been a bit attacked as well. Can't really see by what. Anyway, and uh, that's the giant mustard. Looking quite good too. So, happy with that. All I need now is my new planters <laughs> to put them all in. I just came to check on the level of the battery and whilst I'm here I thought I'd just give you a quick update on what's happening with our solar system. As you might recall we were having trouble with the inverter switching itself off with an F51 fault which cut the power to the house which was suboptimal <laughs> um, and it seems as if the problem has been fixed. We haven't really had since the problem has seemingly been fixed a very very hot sunny day to put it to the test but we have had quite hot and quite sunny days so just in case you happen to have one of these MPP solar inverters um, the problem appeared to be and I'm delighted to say it was this straightforward the air vents on the side one on either side up here were blocked and all that we needed to do was unscrew it and rinse the filter inside under running water, let it dry and then reattach it. And what's that, what that has meant is even on a hot day, when I put my hand here the inversion is quite cool to the touch and prior to that, before the filters were cleaned, it had got very, very, very hot. So I think what was happening was Potentially, what was happening was it was trying to suck in air to cool itself down, and it just had to suck and suck and suck, and it couldn't. It's just like it couldn't breathe. So it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter, and then it just switched itself off to protect itself. Fingers crossed, problem solved. Uh, now we just have to try and tackle the inevitable next problem. <laughs> That's a nice sight. Start of my Tuesday morning walk. Oh, look at this one. Look at that one. Hello, little kangaroo. Oh, that was a kangaroo coughing. It's quite a lot, actually. Dotted about. <laughs> Frozen in terror. Good morning. It's all right. <laughs> Let's see what these ones do. Morning. a hasty retreat. Hello wallaby. <laughs> Can you hear that? Oh, 
That's a bower bird. They make these extraordinary noises. Um, I'm down at the creek walk, We're up in the trees. I'm not sure if it's trying to impress a female or scare off a rival. I've heard them mimicking other birds. Um, particularly the kookaburras. They're very interesting birds, famous of course for collecting things that are blue in colour and taking them to their nests they build on the ground, which is, gives them their name, bowerbird. I've seen them flying off with bits of um, blue rope. <laughs> So I've removed all the blue rope from the garden because I just don't, I don't want to litter the countryside. Anyway, maybe we'll cover bowerbirds another day in more detail. This is my Cotoneaster bush. It was here when we moved. Um, and as I say, it's probably my least favourite plant in the whole world. But I've just come out and um, little parrots just flown off into this bush. Um, so for anyone that's wondering why I persist, it's really only because I know the parrots love these red berries and I'm quite happy to provide the parrots with some food even if it does mean I have to put up with this horrible plant. <laughs> Just spotted this new ant's nest on the lawn behind the house. I um, don't mow this patch because there's an ant nest there. I don't know, maybe that's abandoned and this is a new one. Maybe this is an extension. Who knows? Can you see them all scurrying about? <laughs> I wonder what they're like in slow-mo. that answered that. <laughs> I wonder what they're like in time-lapse. Well, that answered that one too. I'm about to start on another one of my last projects. Um, this is the beginning of the Grevillea garden. So the Grevillea garden's basically wedge-shaped <laughs> and I'm at the thin end of the wedge and what I want to do is um, Strim this tea tree back. Um, it seems to mostly grow during spring and summer and then it kind of goes dormant over win autumn winter. So I want to strim it down to keep it in check. Um, mainly that's part of my bushfire strategy just for perspective. That's the house. So this is part of my 50 meter perimeter that I've um, told you about previously. Uh, but also, I want to ensure this is a nice habitat for my grevilleas, which are dotted about over here, um, to grow. So I don't want them getting crowded out by the tea tree. Also in places, because the tree density is now reduced, um, as I took the tea tree back, the consequence of that is that parts of this area have become quite grass bound actually. Not with these sort of nice grasses but with more of a kind of typical meadow grass. Um, I, I assume that's a function of more light and um, so I'll also be strimming that back but that's more up there. I won't get it all done today, I'll just do one batteries charge and this part of the Grevillea garden is mostly tea tree. So that's what I'm going to get up to this afternoon.
not sure where it's heading. It might be heading for our pond. I think it's getting to that time of year where it's thinking about the fact it's getting colder soon. <laughs> It's coming closer to the house because they hibernate in one of our sheds. Not that it actually is cold. Maybe the day length triggers it more than the temperature. I don't know. I just made that up. 